Are we excited to see T.Y. Bello today? She's backstage, so she really needs to hear excitement. Are you excited to see T.Y. Bello? Yeah. T.Y., can you hear us? Are we excited to see T.Y.? Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to introduce T.Y., although I know I really don't need to. Um, she's one of Nigeria's foremost photographers. Like, if you think of having your picture taken by anyone, if you think of a beautiful picture you want to have of yourself, an editorial, the only person you can think about is T.Y. Bello. She's literally the only one who will give you what you're looking for. She's also the only photographer in Nigeria who has photographed three sitting precedents. She has that unique distinction about her. So, without further ado, let's introduce T.Y. Bello. T.Y.? <laughs> wow wow oh. any photographers in the house like you're already working as a photographer wow and how many aspiring photographers your two hands should be up actually <laughs> Um, it's so great to see you guys. I'm even really excited to be here. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay. So when I found out I was doing this class, um, I was so excited and I found out I had only 45 minutes and I was thinking, oh my God, we could do this for three days and we wouldn't run out of words. And I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to teach? What can I teach in 45 minutes? So I've made it very simple. I'm just going to follow the title the secret behind iconic images. I'll start by introducing myself to those who don't know me and don't know my work. My name is T.Y. Bello. I'm a photographer. Um, I started doing this professionally 18 years ago. And it's been an amazing journey. I'm having a great time doing my work. Um, when I started, I, um, I knew I wanted to be a photographer, but I didn't really know what that meant clearly and worse nobody around me really understood what i meant when i said i wanted to be a photographer you know it was in the year 1999 2000 it was such a new idea and so whenever i walked up to people and said oh i'm a photographer or i'm an aspiring photographer people always looked at me a little confused like what is that why would you want to be a photographer because they didn't have a clear image of what a true photographer was but you guys are living in a totally different time. At the time when I started, there were very few platforms to learn photography. And worse, there were fewer platforms to show your work as a photographer. There were few magazines available for you to take photos. There were fewer mag um, newspapers that would take the chance on you to show your work. But the world has changed. Almost everyone is a photographer because everyone has a camera on their phone. And secondly, Apart from everyone being a professional photographer in their hearts, everyone wants, so many people want to be photographers, and there's so many amazing photographers out there. So all the photographers, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so like the way it used to be, everywhere you turn, you see a great photographer, and you see a great, someone who can make great images. And what this means is that the space is very full. It takes a lot more now for your voice to be heard. For you to get noticed now, your work has to be really, really amazing. But don't be discouraged by that, because prior, unlike prior to now, everybody can have their own exhibition every day. Everybody has an Instagram page, and nobody can actually stop you from being wonderful. So. Even though it's more competitive and there's so many more photographers, there's not a better time to be a photographer. Because right, like immediately, you already have an audience to show your great work. So I'll start off today by, um, by talking about secrets to iconic images. Most of the people that I photograph are people that have been photographed over and over again by different photographers. So when I get the um, brief, or commission to photograph someone that's an icon or someone that's famous my first thought is how do I make an image that will be new how do I make an image that people will not forget and how do I make an image that will be authentic how do I make an image that will be true to me 
So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of my images and I'm going to run you through my thought process as in how do I think when I get an opportunity to make an image. Now, making a beautiful image is a great thing, but it's never enough anymore. To make a pretty picture of someone is okay, it's nice, but usually I try to push further than that. I want to experience the person and I want to make an exchange and I also want to tell a story. So here's how my process goes. When somebody, when I get a commission to take a portrait of someone, I get my journal and I write down everything that comes to mind about the person. And if I can't really find enough thoughts, I call the person and if they're really famous, I call their manager and I say, can you please ramble? Talk to me about anything. What's on your mind right now? What's going on through your head? So I'll start with Davido. I was going to show you a, a short video and then I'll tell you what was going on through my mind when I made the images. So we, you guys can roll. Okay, before you play the video. So when I, when I spoke to Davido when, um, and I was supposed to be taking his photos, it was a very interesting and controversial time in his career. There were so many people saying so many negative things, throwing this at him and throwing that at him. And then what I like about him is that he would also respond. And, and he got me thinking about what it means to be a celebrity. When you're a celebrity, it means that you're out there. And people think it's like their human right to throw things at you. People say things about you. They don't consider you as a human being. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to explore in an image that whole concept of people throwing things at him. And so what I did was I went really literal and I had my staff throw things at him. So we started by throwing paint bombs at him and we started by, and then we went on to throwing water at him. So I'll show you the video of that and then I'll show you the final image. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any sound. There's supposed to be sound anyway. So our shoots are really fun and we started by throwing all these things at him and then we had him respond and then we had this bunch of explosive images with people throwing paints of different colors at him. And for me, I think that's what it means to be in the public space sometimes, you know, to be prepared for people to throw things at you. <laughs> and then I joined it in the dance. And I... Okay, you guys can move on to the next slide. And so these are the images that I had of him. I just had pictures of people throwing things at him. I think I remember we had another one with us throwing water at him. You know? Yes. So that whole concept of being a performer and knowing that if you don't do well, you know, when you're on a theater, people throw rotten eggs and rotten tomatoes. And then it's, it's like that now. You, you don't necessarily have to be on a stage. Just being on social media, you're permanently on a stage 24-7. Let's move to the next artist. Oh, yeah. And David, I remember I spoke to his manager and they were talking about how... Um, he was moving out internationally and he was very, very, very excited about exploring Nigerian sounds in an international space. And I thought, okay, that'd be nice. Let me bring um, a second object. Let me bring Africa into his picture. And then I thought about bringing a female model and I made her represent Africa. And then I had this image for the cover of the magazine. Yeah. So that's the image I had of Davido and Africa. So what am I saying? When you have the opportunity to make an image. I mean, it's really easy to just go out there and say, okay, this is an opportunity for me to practice just how creative I can be. But taking that little time to think about your subject and think about what they're about and think about where they are and find a way to use your word, work to explore it. And it doesn't have to be complicated. The next person I'll be showing is um, um, Dari Atalade. When I got the chance to photograph him again, it was really that simple. His name is Dare Art Alade. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to just make my own art. I haven't painted in a long time. So we're just going to paint on Dare Art Alade's face. And then we made these images of him with paint on his face. Um, I also thought about it and I thought, okay, Dare is a multi-dimensional person. He's deeper than what you see. His music is very deep and he has so many things going on inside of him. How do we make images that show that he's multi-dimensional? So I thought of two photographic ideas, to photograph him and use multi-strobes so we can have many things going on at the same time. So what I did was um, I had many dancers around him and then I also did photos where I had all the lights um, 
gel colored in different ways. And these are the pictures that I came up with. So I have this image over here. And then I have the next one, which is not Photoshop. I had many dancers dancing around him, and he felt like he was almost exploding with his ideas and his multi-layer. The next person is, can you show me the next slide? I remember when I did this picture of Olaju Moke, it was really simple. I didn't know the images were going to get noticed at all, but I was photographing and this bread seller walked into the scene and I thought, hmm, how about I make her a love interest? You know that bread seller that everybody on the street is in love with and wants to marry? You know, I'm going to make her dress a little longer. I'm going to paint it really red. And that was exactly what I did. And I had a um, tiny temper turn in her direction like he was noticing her. Next slide. And then Dekule Gold. I remember when I did um, the shoot for Dekule Gold. Um, same thing. I just went straight to his name and I went straight to where I thought his music was. So his name is Dekole Gold. So I was going to bring elements of gold into the images because I had never seen anyone do that. And then the next thing was to think, what do I think about him? I think his sound is really, really rich and very old but yet he's brought it into a very new space. So I thought, what if I took elements of gold that looked very futuristic and then merged him with him wearing like a very, very old Agbada. So I had a friend of mine give me an old Ashoki, like I think that thing must have been 100 years old. And then I was able to use my images to represent the future and the past. Now the point is not making images and thinking that everyone will get what you're saying, but at least giving yourself an opportunity to start you need an idea to start with. And it doesn't matter how simple the idea is. People will eventually connect with it somehow. Next slide. So I had like this futuristic, I had um, a sculptor come and cut up little pieces of gold metal and then we just arranged them in interesting spaces with the old, um, with the old Agbada. Next slide. Yes, um, flavor, next slide. Um, I remember when I was supposed to shoot photos for his um, album cover and I was thinking flavor, flavor, flavor. First things, everybody knows that flavor likes to be shirtless. So I was like, you know what, I was going to keep him in his, you know, in his um, comfort zone and then we're going to focus on clothes. But then the, the cover title, the al title of his album was called Ijele, The Traveler. And sometimes the first idea that comes to your mind is the worst idea. So I thought a traveler, um, suitcase, traveling on a journey. Then I thought, no, that's going to be cheesy. How about we show what it means to be a human being on a journey? We are constantly trying to push forward and move into new spaces. So I started to make these images of him, you know, like pushing into something. And some of the images were still, and some of them, I had them blurred out to show movement. Next slide. And those were the images that he used on the cover of his next album. Also, um, the, the other thing that struck me about Flavor, let, let's go back, was the fact that, you know, you, he's really, really good looking. As in, I was so shocked. He looked really flawless. And I just wanted to take um, simple images that showed you the simplicity of his face. Um, next slide. Um, that's Jidenna. And that is someone that makes all of us really proud. He's in the international scene as a musician. And I love the fact that he embraces his Igbo boyness, he embraces his Nigerianness, and I wanted to make images that showed him and that. So I asked someone to look for a mask, an Igbo mask. I don't think we were successful, but we got a good one. And it's funny, the mask actually looked like him. And then I was pretty much showing his unmasking. And then also, again, Jidena is also almost look like, looks like an angel. He's really good looking. And I wanted to make, next slide, images of him that looked almost otherworldly and saintly. So I, um, I used his love for Ankara and I looked for a pattern that looked like a, a halo around his head to show that he's, he's almost not human. He's so beautiful. He looks almost angelic. And that was how I interpreted that. Yeah, that's Tijena. Next slide. Yeah, and Tiwa Savage. Tiwa's was very interesting. Um, when I was asked to shoot Tiwa, the first thing that came to my mind was her music. Tiwa is very international. She sounds like a Rihanna or Beyonce, and her songwriting is on that level. But she also sounds like my aunties doing the disco dance from 1982. Her sound is very ritual and very Nigerian ritual, Nigerian disco. 
Do you understand? So if you listen to a lot of her songs, you can almost hear this girl was in touch with her mom when her mom was younger. And so I wanted something that was very um, grassroots and very ritual at the same time. So while I was shoot, usually I like my favorite market is Mushi Market. Whenever I'm doing a shoot and I've run out of ideas for props, I just go to Mushi Market. And while I was standing on the road, this old Toyota, red Toyota Starlet, you know, drove past me and I looked inside. I know those Toyota Starlets with the allergies, the, the inside was made of, made of um, black and white fur. The guy had decorations in his car, pimped it up, you know, the Niger way. And I ran after the car and I said, I need your car. I took his phone number. He thought I was crazy and he moved on in traffic. I said, no, I'm not mad. I just really need to use your car tomorrow. So we exchanged numbers and then he brought my Toyota Starlet to me and I was able to shoot Tiwa Savage in, in the Toyota Starlet. Now, it may not make sense to anybody else, but for me, I was able to make that connection between a very new and very slick artist, which is her sound, and then the connection she has with the very gritty and very grungy and the very retro. And that was how I did it. Next slide. Um, Debola Williams and Chude Gideonwo, when I thought about them, I thought about the fact that they have very big, big dreams. And I remember when I was growing up, I watched this movie, Field of Dreams. And I was thinking, how do I create a field in my studio? So I went somewhere and I picked up um, um, dead grass and I arranged it and I created some kind of a field for them. Next slide. Um, Rita Dominic. Um, I remember making this picture of her and while we were waiting to do the actual shoot, um, I was shooting her in, in her hotel room and there was this beautiful light. Are you, how am I doing for time? Yeah, I was, do, I was um, looking at this really beautiful light in the corridor, but the stylist had bought this really, you know, stiff outfit for her, and I thought it didn't work, as in, it would be very hard to, for her to get into character. So I said, Rita, please take off all your clothes. Just forget these clothes. So I rode into her hotel room, and I yanked up the sheets, and then I gave her a glass of water, and I said, you know what, take these sheets, put it on, and get into character. So she just sat on the floor and we made this image. Now, people look at it and it means something different to everyone. But I think it's more powerful than me just going out there and making a pretty picture. I wanted to show her as an actor and I wanted to show, and I, wanted, and I just let her decide where she wanted to go with the image. Next slide. Um, I did this of an emerging artist and it was really simple, um, an emerging sound. How do I express that? So what I did was I tore, um, my back, rather than shoot her against the back, backdrop, I tore the backdrop and I let her peep through it. Next slide. Yeah, Emmanuel, one of my favorite um, image. Um, I had been making this image of dancers, all of them wearing white. And that morning I saw myself making a photo of a, a dancer that was albino. And I asked all my dancers friends, do you know any any dancer that's either really light or an albino? And they said no. And then on my way home in traffic, I saw Emmanuel about to board an Okada. And then me and two of my friends jumped out of the car and literally dragged him into our car and said, look, we're not, we're not kidnapping you. We just want to take your photos. And Emmanuel came home with us that day and made some of the most beautiful images I've ever met, made. He looked just like the dancer I had pictured in my head. And, and it's funny, all his images were made with a crown. You know, and it was such an encouraging session for him because he was going through a hard time at the time. Next slide, next slide, next slide. How many minutes do I have, Mom? What? Okay, go on. Um, Bado, Olamide. Okay. Olamide is one of my favorite Nigerian artists. And I, um, I love him because I can hear beyond the hip-hop and beyond the hit songs. I know that he's very deep and he's very poetic. And I, I was thinking, you know, I'm used to seeing photos of, of him looking really hard and like a hip-hop artist. And, and I knew he had a softer side. I remember when I was shooting him, I was shooting, playing a song, one of my favorite artists, uh, music, uh, musicians from Mali. And immediately, Olamide picked it up and said, is this from Mali? You know, and I wanted to show images that showed his softer side. So I had flowers around his images. And, and that might not mean anything to anyone, but when I started making the images, that was what I had in mind. So keep going. So I'll just show you a few more. Okay. So 
beyond telling you the stories behind my, my images, that is my own creative process, right? I look at a subject and I'm thinking, how can I connect with this subject? And how do I make an image that people will connect with and that people will remember? And I know that one of the ways that I can do that is trust my own thoughts. But I cannot thrust, trust my own thoughts if I haven't taken time to enrich them and to build them. So today I will be sharing with you three things that I know for sure about photography. I mean, it's a master class I know and I would have loved to sit down and teach you, okay, how I work and what, what equipment I use. And I'm hoping to do that, show you stuff like that, doing questions and answers. But I, I thought that what I could leave with you today would be my own thought process. How do I think about pictures? Do I just let somebody stand in front of me and I point a light at them and make an image? Or do I push further? So I'll show you three things to know that would help you as a photographer. And like I said, how many people here are just about to start their journey as photographers that are just thinking about it? Okay, so I think this would really help you. And I think it might also help people who are already photographers. Know thyself. Um, the most important thing to know is yourself. And, and that is in many ways, as in why do you want to be a photographer? For me, the reason why I wanted to be a photographer was because when I was young, I painted. I painted and I loved to paint and then I stopped painting. And I felt like I had spent all this time going to university and I felt it was a bit too late to go back and paint and learn to paint again. But for me, photography was a way for me to express that side of myself. And so that is why most of my images tend to look painterly because that is what I'm about. I love to paint. It's me. It's not, I'm not um, making painterly pictures because that's what's in or that's what people will like. It's me expressing something that matters to me. So when you decide that, hey, I want to be a photographer, it's very important for you to ask yourself, why am I choosing this medium? And what do I have to say? And what, what will I do differently? In, and, and that can be determined by many, many other things. Another thing is to decide what kind of photography you want to do in the first place. When I started as a photographer, I started off as a documentary photographer. And then I found out more and more that even though my images were documentary, most of my images were portraits. So at the, at the time, I was shooting weddings. I shot everything. But then as I grew as a photographer, I realized the reason why I picked up this camera is because I love to connect with people. And I think I would make an amazing portrait photographer. And so even though it wasn't a thing, at the time, I stopped shooting everything else and I decided I would be a photo portrait photographer, even though nobody did that. Everybody around me shot everything. The second thing is to really, really know your field. You know, I talk to a lot of young photographers and I ask them, who is your favorite photographer? And their favorite photographer, everybody they know is their own little circle of Lagos photographers. They haven't taken out time to research photography, to know the history of it, to know where it's coming from. Photography is a very, 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 very wide, and it's been here for a uh, field, and it's been here for a long time. And it's so important to you to take out the time to research photography. I've looked at some of the images that I've made here today. None of those images were me trying to copy anyone. But I can tell you for sure that if you research the picture that I had of um, the torn paper of the girl, I've seen a picture like that of Mario Testino doing exactly the same thing. Maybe in a slightly different way, but there's no photography idea that you have that hasn't been done before by some photographer in 1972 in Finland. Like, but how would you know if you don't research? So you must research photography as a genre. What that does is that it would broaden your mind and it would deepen your work. So rather than just looking at Instagram, it's important that you look at books, see exhibitions, you know, meet photographers, know your history, read about photography, listen to, um, watch YouTube, watch interviews of photographers, listen to them talk about their work, and also know photography technically. I always say, if you want to be a photographer, the technical stuff is the basic stuff. Don't, don't trip over that. Don't trip over technique. Don't trip over cameras because you should know everything you should know about your camera. And guess what? Unlike when I became a photographer, there was no information available. But everything you need to know about photography is on YouTube. 
Everything you need to know about lighting is on YouTube. Everything you need to know about your camera is on YouTube. It's on Google. It's on many photography web websites. So to be a, a great photographer and to be a technically prof proficient photographer is just really simple. Take out time. Stop. Read. Learn. Research. And then you can step out confidently and practice as well. The third important point is find inspiration in everything else. Most photographers that I know only find inspiration in photography. So they have an idea, but that idea has come from a photograph. But there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with looking at work. In fact, it's very good for you, like I said. But one of the most beautiful ways to work as a creative person is to find cross-references. I am always looking for references in film, in fashion, in art, in music videos, you know, in styling. And I'm constantly looking for, in music, some, you know, I was, um, I'll give you an example. I'm also a musician and I remember once I was making an album and my producer and I walked, watched Project Runway the entire period that we were writing songs. Because in many ways, a song is like, a, is like an outfit. You're, you're putting things together and building it into something that works. Same thing with a photo photograph. You can compare it with many other things. But if your knowledge of other things outside of photography is not deep enough, then your inspiration is very, very limited. The most important thing that I'll be sharing with you now is find your higher calling. So you have this camera in your hand. And you make beautiful images and people love your work and people are able to exchange money for your work and people want to see your work so the most important thing you can do now is use your photography as a tool for the things that you really believe in the things that you want to further its cause the things that you want to push forward in life because for me that's when your work starts to have meaning when you use your art and you use your work and you use it to push the things that really matter to you so I'm going to keep this conversation short and I'm going to stop here. But what is it that I want to leave with you today? It's just this, that the photography space is very crowded and sometimes you feel like you're shouting and no one is listening. You're showing work and it seems like people are not paying attention. But you must keep pushing. But you have to push in the right direction. There's more than enough room for everyone as long as you're speaking with your authentic voice and as long as you take enough time to find that authentic voice. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> so here's my favorite, um, here's my favorite um, part of the show, questions and answers. And for me, my best classes, I mean, usually when I'm holding a master class, it'd be for three days or at least a whole day. So this is very short. I have only for five minutes. But anybody, please think about your questions for me and I'll be very, very happy to answer them. So um, does anyone have any questions? Yay. Okay, I'll start with the lady. Ladies first and I'll start with the guy. Yeah. Okay, um, my question is this. Um, how do you infuse you were talking about knowing yourself. How do you infuse knowing yourself into your photography? And then um, you were talking about knowing your higher calling. So before I came here, I already had this question in mind. For like your higher calling, well, it's not the open conversation to discuss here, but between me and you, how do you balance what you do as music into photography or with photography, like your higher calling? How do you balance it? Okay. okay. It's really simple. It's, it's, um, it's in many ways, it's knowing what you like and bringing elements of it into your work. I mean, you're an artist and to be an artist means you're absolutely free and you can do whatever you want. If you're in a space as an artist where maybe you're a photographer and you work somewhere and everything you do is stuff that you've been asked to do, it's fine to have a job, but you must find time to explore and to experiment and to take your own thoughts and your own ideas and your own, you know, things that you see in your head and, and put it into your work. Um, for me, one of my biggest um, things is encouragement. I love to give and receive encouragement. And so whenever I make work, it's very important that whoever I'm shooting is inspired. And it's also very important to me that when I write a story or when I put up the work, when people read it and they feel it, they feel inspired or at least encouraged. Do you understand? I don't want my work to be so 
I want my work to be awesome, but I want people to feel like they can do it too. That's my message. So every photographer has to find their own message. If it's your message is to oppress everybody, let everybody know that you are numero uno. Yeah, go for it. Whatever your message is, as long as it's authentically yours, you can go out there and push it. Um, how do you put your higher calling? For me, the higher calling is just, I was just playing with words, is what you're about into your work. And for me, art is art. Music, photography, painting, cooking, dressing up, like for instance, I wear the same outfit every single day. It's all part of who you are. And and it's very important for me. What I, what, I, what I put out through my music is exactly the same thing I put, put out through my photography. If you follow my work enough and you listen to my sound, there are very many similarities. And it takes time. I'm exploring. I'm learning new ways. I'm always looking for new ways. How can I use my work you know, to push what it is that I, I care about? And one of the easiest ways is just to shoot that thing. There was a time that I, I was... When I became more passionate about fashion, I started shooting more fashion. I started incorporating more fashion and paying more attention to styling into my work. There was a time where I only cared about emotion and I hated fashion. I thought it was a distraction. But the more I started to understand fashion, the more I incorporated it into my work. I want to ask you this very question. How long does it take you to gather the information and to complete a project? And the second one, what inspires you? Okay, every shoot is different. This is my thought process. Um, when I'm nervous, I come up with my best ideas. So what I really do, what I should do, is once I know I'm shooting someone, is to take out time, research the person, research my idea, and, and then hope that I can get something out of that. Now, in certain situations, I would research the person. I would Google the person and I would have nothing. So what I normally do is just leave the idea alone and wait to the last minute when I'm really nervous about the shoot. And if you ever come to my, watch me work, I'm always prancing up and down my studio, trying to connect with something. And it might be anything, it might be anything that they say at the moment. So there's no one way to come up with your ideas. Sometimes it can come to you way in advance and you can see a shoot very clearly. Luckily, I don't really shoot in advertising where I'm shooting to a crafted down idea. Most of the time, when I ask my clients, is there anything you'd want me to do? They're like, no, T.Y., just go for it, whatever comes to you. And having that freedom means that I know it's going to come. I have to trust that that idea is going to come. So I just keep, I'm very spontaneous. I'm looking for cues in everything. Sometimes it's just shoes. I remember when I shot Alibaba and he brought like 12, he loves shoes. And I thought, okay, good, what's it like to be in his shoes? And so I had this picture where I lined up his shoes and I had him step in. Do you understand? So now, some of the ideas that I'm mentioning sound really cheesy and very blase, like in your face, but it's okay. Just have an idea, no matter how simple it is. What you do when you work is you step into that idea and then you start to refine it as, refine it as you go through the work. Sometimes I start with an idea and when I'm done exploring, I'm on the exact opposite of where I started. But it's always good to have something to start with in the first place. Next question. Um, thank you very much for the talk so far. Um, since we are talking photography, beyond um, what I've heard from you so far, I would like to... Because already I'm seeing a picture of photography in you. Oh. I have a concept in my mind already. So I'd like to know, your hair, is it natural or is it, um, I don't know. And um, aside that, sorry, do you also have any similarity with um, our own popular iconic Asha? Okay. Um, I think, yeah, that would do. Okay, Thank you. good question. Okay, can I have one more person's question to answer both together? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask two questions. One is this. Um, do you think your music has helped your profession as a photographer in any way? Okay. You know, bringing you out to the public. And then two, for a beginner, what would you advise as the basic implements in photography that a person ought to have? What do you mean by implement? Like, like uh, DX cameras or what you think someone needs to have? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I think, I think I'll, ans I'll answer the thing about my hair and Asha and my dressing after this. But, okay, here's very important. I was hoping someone would ask this question. Please, 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 please. Photography is that profession that you get into. And you are going to, if you fall into this pit, 
you never have any money because every equipment out there is going to be your favorite heart's desire. You're going to feel every time you look through a photography magazine or you see your favorite photographer that you need to have what they have to be able to do what they do. And that is not true at all. For the first six years of my photography, I used almost the same camera over and over again. Do you understand? Even when I bought better cameras, I always went back to my little rebel baby because I knew that camera and that camera loved me. So here's the thing. The most important thing to de develop, if you have any money, right? I always tell people, buy a camera, buy the best lens you can afford. I think for me, lenses are more important than cameras. Do you understand? I can get, get a really, really basic camera. Once I have a good enough lens, I'm more likely to be able to get more done with regards to depth of field. Everybody knows that, right? And even if you don't have a good lens, there are ways to cheat and get, get those things done. So the most important thing that you, the most important equipment as a photographer is your mind. More people ex, um, invest more in equipment than they do in educating themselves. I educate myself every year. I must go listen to someone I respect speak. If there, sometimes it's photographers, sometimes it's painters, I will chase them down. I'll find out where they're speaking and I'll go listen. If I can't do that physically, I will troll them, I'll follow, I mean, I will, um, I will stalk them on, in, on, on the internet and watch every single interview they've ever done on YouTube. I think that is what you need to invest in more than a, a camera and a lens. I, I in, the, in the last couple of years, I bought a lot of equipment. I hardly use any of them because they don't really make that much of a difference to my work. What makes a difference to my work is making work that is vigorous, that, that the, the thinking is tougher, you know, and I know what I'm doing, not necessarily my camera. Okay. I have extensions, people. I, I've said it on Instagram over and over again. It's almost impossible. Very few people with my kind of hair texture can have hair look this big. So it's not all mine. Is that, is that okay? All right. And secondly, um, do I have a, lo a lot in common with Asha? Well, I love Asha. I love her music. Um, I think maybe because we both have husky voices, I get the comparison a lot. And I also love her heart, so I'm a big fan. Um, next question. Good afternoon. Um, I would just like to ask, it's not particular to photography. Okay. How do you, when, in the process of being focused on what you want to achieve, how do you keep your relationship together? You're really, not like your husband or anything, but people, you have friends that you've grew, you grew up with and all that. How do you keep that in, in line with like getting focused? Because sometimes just people, or oh, I think I get to forget every other person when... It's very, very difficult. Um, the more busy you are, the, the busier you get, the more successful you are, the more demand there is for your time. It takes a lot of discipline. Relationships don't grow if you don't invest in them. And, but it's a two-way streak. Um, my friends know that they can't see me on a Saturday. Saturday is like a Monday morning for a photographer. So that means that I'm going to miss their kids' birthday parties. At least missed most of the party. I mean, I should probably show there after the party is over. But surround yourself with people that love you and really know you. And, and take time out to invest in your relationships. If you don't invest in those relationships, they die. They just die. When you show your vision of becoming a photographer to your parents, uh, what were their reaction? Because I believe uh, most parents do discourage their children, especially in the area of choosing of career. Yeah. Then the second one is, uh, I want you to share uh, your challenges before becoming a great photographer, your challenges that you embark on. There. Okay. Okay, next. I want to thank GT Bank for this. This is the second time I'm here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I love your style. I love everything about you. I've been listening to you since when I was a kid. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm an aspiring food, um, fashion designer, yeah. uh, footwear and clothing. Uh, I feel photography is the soul of everything. It can bring my success. And uh, I want to enjoy this business using photography and social media, digital marketing. Yeah. And um, as, a, as a great tool. Okay. And uh, can I have a wrap up of this vision? Tell me, go ahead. It's going to work. Okay. Thank you. Ma. Okay. I'm going to lose my thoughts. So you remind me, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. well. Good afternoon. You no. look so beautiful. Thank like, you. 
real black American lady. Let me so ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my question goes, you know, some of these celebrity you've worked with, yeah. what was your first challenge with the first celebrity? What was it like, the challenges you faced? Because okay. some of them can be so difficult. Okay. Mm. All right. Let me start with the person who asked about, um, she's a designer, and how does she use photography? to um, push what she's doing. Okay, here's the thing. You don't have to be a photographer to be a great photographer. And you can let your photographs do for you more than it will do for a photographer. In other words, if you're a makeup artist, you already would make a great photographer. So I always say the best photographers are makeup artists. I used to be a makeup artist. I used to be a hairstylist. And that kind of helps in my work. So if you're doing something else that needs to be on a platform, just that little investment in understanding lighting and understanding photography can, put, can take your work to a whole different pedestal. It's, it's so different when you have a photo of a, a pair of shoes done with your phone or done with your, or done a pair of shoes done with your phone in very good lighting, and then a pair of shoes done with a camera in very good lighting. So I think that you can always use photography to push whatever medium that you're using on for your marketing on the internet. Um, what's it like um, wanting to be a creative person and choose a career in, um, in photography or in any creative um, arena and your parents don't support you and somebody else was asking what was my biggest challenge that was my biggest challenge luckily my mom was supportive but the biggest challenge that I had was people didn't really understand what I was talking about do you understand you want to be a I remember I, I was sitting down in 2001 in a car with some an auntie who really really was concerned and she goes um, Tony you are living your dreams Abby I said, yes, yeah, said you want to be a photographer, you want to travel the world, you want to have exhibitions. She said, you're living your dreams, Abby. And I said, yes. And she goes, wake up. Wake up from that dream. In other words, it's not a realistic dream. It's not going to buy you a car. It's not going to build your house. It's not going to pay your rent. And she sat me down and basically painted this picture of what photography cannot do for me. Now... That is one of the best conversations I've ever had in my life. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, be quick, though. So we have to be really quick. Yeah, um, I have um, a list of questions here. Just one. Just no, no, one question, one question. Just one. One. Just one. Um, okay. Okay, um, this is very hard, actually, because these questions are very important. No, okay, let me just... Can I ask two? One. <laughs> Hurry up. Okay, okay. Um, how, how did you make your first million in photography? Give, just take us through the stage okay. and uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, I love your work so much. Thank you. Always intriguing me. Uh, my question is that I noticed a trend in the foreign industry, Hollywood per se. There's this use of still photography for yeah. movies. And okay. I'm yet to see that kind of trend. Okay. In the Nigerian movie Still industry. photography. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I was going to ask you: Is it because it's expensive, or what's what's behind the film industry not making use of it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll Thank answer you. that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to know: How do you cope with some of the clients that maybe they requested for changing of background? Because I see some of your work; you always get it right from the getting the background using it. how do you cope with them like some of them say i want changing of background using photoshop i mean yeah using uh, photo editing tools. yeah how do you cope with them okay thank you oh i'm so glad that somebody brought up finance because if you've lived you've left um other opportunities to pursue photography it's going to be very hard if you don't have a lot of money but i must say this when you're looking to create wealth with whatever you do you must be clear about what kind of wealth you want to create. Look at it very, very well. Look at that amount of money you want to be earning. Let it enter your head. Be clear, love it, romance it, kiss it, and then walk away from it and face your work. When I started as a photographer in this town, I decided I was going to be a, 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 a portrait photographer. People only understood portrait photography with regards walking into a studio for two minutes, take a picture, go out, pay 500 naira. So I wanted people to pay for my work. People were not ready to pay for my work. People did not understand the value of my work. So what did I do? I started to do the work anyway. 
Do you understand? And then I started to network. So I would do, I would ask someone, I, want, I would love to photograph your family. I would love to photograph, you know. And then slowly, I started to build a network of people who loved my work. I didn't have a network of people who were willing to pay for my work, but I had fans. And I had people who believed in my work. And those are the people that opened the door for me to make money. Those are the people that introduced me to the clients that were willing to pay me money. Some of those family portraits that I did are the people that introduced me to my corporate gigs. Before you know it, um, that person would know someone on the board of a bank and they'd be like, oh, they will, I would love for you to do what you've done for me for my bank. So here's the thing. Yes, you must work hard. If you don't work, you will not eat. But do not, it's very difficult when you make money your goal because when you make money your goal people can see it and people will hold on to their money but when they see that you're bigger than that and what you're looking at is really to serve them then they're happy to exchange money for you and i can't remember when i made my first i think I, 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 the moment passed by i wish i had paid more attention secondly the, the other question about um clients asking you to change backdrops okay you have to be clear when someone hires you you have to have a meeting with them and say, okay, this is the kind of work that I do. If I am a documentary photographer and I have made reportage work for you, and then you say, I don't like all this reportage, all these moments, you know, magic moments. I want to see work that is painterly. Then I had the wrong photographer. Do you understand? Now, you must please your client. The client is always right, but I think it's, always, it's also clear for you to explain to them what kind of work you do because sometimes people are hiring you but they're looking for you to create another kind of work and also with photoshop nothing is impossible if you go on youtube today they can teach you how to make a selection and change a backdrop thank you very much everyone i'm so happy to spend this couple of minutes with you i i had an amazing time thank you so much for coming for my class thank you